it becomes a little bit predictable. I want to see a classic Stan Lazaridis kind of to the. Just, I was literally just thinking of him to the byline and get it. In. I think you know we love we love a um, uh, a winger, you know, a direct winger. Stan Lazaridis, you know, uh, Jose Dominguez, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, someone who's got a bit of flair and pace that yeah. can actually bypass, but also can actually deliver and supply exactly. as well. So welcome back to BCFC Royal Blue. And what an exciting summer it's been for Birmingham City. Uh, we are now approaching the very end of the summer transfer window. Uh, and Birmingham City have confirmed the 15th signing of the transfer window, Scott Wright from Rangers. In this podcast, myself and Matt, like we do with all the new players, are just going to have a quick chat about Scott, a bit of his characteristics, and maybe consider what he's going to add to Birmingham City. So, Matt, uh, what do you think about the signing of Scott Wright? I mean, what's going on at Rangers? Are they just unloading their entire team? <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean I'm, I'm happy for the, the, the transfers, but what's going on up there? Um, but, yeah, I think I think this is a decent signing as well. You know, he was one of the better performers, I thought, you know, when Blues played Rangers in the uh, Trevor Francis Memorial game. Yeah, I yeah. thought he actually looked pretty bright in, in spells and parts. Yeah, he actually got on the score sheet as well. Um, so, again, just about context, League One club, you know, Historically, Norwich have been in for him uh, in previous years. Blackburn have shown interest in him. And again, I think this is a, a pretty good signing. And he's a bit more of a direct player from what I've been seeing mm. and reading. And you know, Dad, we have said about Blues this year, struggling with the end product, maybe overplaying it a little bit in the final third. We need to be a bit more decisive. And now we have Lyndon Dykes and, and Alfie May up front. Obviously, uh, they're not going to be playing possibly at the same time. But um, with a player like this, we could end up seeing a lot more balls get into the box with a lot more service. So... Again, overall, I think he's a he's a pretty decent player. Yeah, and I think he's a predominantly a right-sided player, he but he can play. Uh, you know, he's a bit, bit, little bit versatile Versatile's to play, yeah. but he but he is predominantly played on the right-hand side. Uh, but the research I've been doing on him, I've, I've come across the word tricky as well. He's like a tricky little Flair, player yeah. as well. Which, is, but I think you mentioned just a second ago, which I think is important as well, which we are lacking slightly at the moment. Is we need more end products, so we need wide players that can provide supply to the strikers. Uh, you know, it is improving, but obviously this guy I see is providing pretty much competition uh, for Keshi Anderson uh, and Miyoshi uh, yeah. as well uh, on the uh, on the right hand side, but he's a he's a, again he's a good age as well, twenty seven. Yeah. So we, as we mentioned when we did the preview of the uh, Lyndon Dykes signing, uh, you know this is set twenty seven twenty eight is the prime age where you think they'd be at their peak mm -hmm. uh, or, or at least in the start of the peak so we're not buying a, a young and experienced player here you've got a player with a bit of experience I'll talk through that in a moment actually because I think that's pretty pretty important that we, we realise what we've got really in terms of I think the experience is key isn't it oh absolutely uh, it's all right it's it's bringing on new players and young players but obviously the experience is what is uh, especially in League One Dad we, we talk about this a lot don't we about the physicality of League One we talk about hitting different styles of teams at different strengths you know the, the famous saying, park the bus comes to mind, you know, lumping it long. You know, we, we, we hit a lot of different uh, oppositions in League One. So having that bit more of experience in, in the, uh, on the field is really valuable. Yeah, you know? I, th so I, th I think it's absolutely I think it's crucial. crucial. Yeah. I think he was, he's more well known, obviously, Scotland. He's only ever played in Scotland before this move. Uh, Aberdeen is where he really made his name. He went through the various Aberdeen youth systems, the under 17s, under 18s, under 20s. Um, and uh, he uh, went out on loan in 2018, 2019 into Dundee, uh, which is you know a big, a big uh, Scottish um, uh, club as well, um, and then uh, the, went back to uh, to Aberdeen, and eventually in 2021 he was sold to Rangers. Uh, I mean the fee I've got here is 200k, but I mean I don't know how much that fee is actually correct. I saw 500k so we're talking it, in it, and around a it, was, yeah. it wasn't like millions and yeah. millions and uh, you know and I think he's um, he's, he's, he's like I say he's, he's done pretty well as well so um, in terms of the games he's played which I always think is a really important stat so he's got uh, we'll discount the uh, Aberdeen youth team so Dundee FC where he was on loan he played 13 games scored 3 goals and 4 assists that's not bad 13 games um, Aberdeen he scored 70 played 79 games scored 7 Seven goals and eleven assists, uh, and Rangers. He's played one hundred and twenty games, twelve goals and seven assists. But that will be across the Scottish Premier League, yeah. across the Europa League, Europa Conference League, because Rangers always 
you know, have the uh, the always finish one or two, don't they? Mm. As well. So um, yeah, so 128 games in the Scottish Premiership, 10 goals, nine assists, 15 goals in the Europa League qualifying, um, 15 games, sorry, one goal, four assists. The Europa League proper, 14 games, one goal, two assists. Um, and then there's various Scottish FA Cups, League Cups, etc. So again, across Scotland, he's had a, a range of experience in the Premier League mm -hmm. uh, and in Europe as well. So again, good experience to come down to League One. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a mixed bag on social media, you know, listening to Rangers fans, listening to a few other fans, you know, some have said he's a good player, some have said I'll pack his bags for him. You know, again, just a mixed bag depending on where you read. But there's a couple of key strengths I've picked out and you've kind of highlighted them there to be honest, Dad, but one of them is the versatility. You yeah. can play across and I know you're probably going to come back to a heat map. I'm not sure whether you have one lined up. Of but, course I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I did see a heat map. I, I, uh, I can't remember where the source was or reference, but it did show show his uh, heat map for the course of a season because you know he can he can play across the whole, and it yeah. really was red everywhere it re yeah. he was really full on energetic you mentioned like a tricky sort of quick player one of the things apparently like he's good at is a change of pace yeah. so he can go from quite casual and a burst and a burst yeah. exa exactly yeah. and apparently one of his biggest skill sets is on the turn he'll lure a defender into a full sense of security knock it and absolutely oh, pace on so really good yeah. change of yeah. pace so hopefully we get to see him going through the gears and as I say, if he can get that final delivery and get some service to our strikers, I think he could be a real asset. I think I think it's uh, again, you know, when players move, you are going to get negative comments from the teams that they're moving from are. because uh, you know there's some some fans like players, some don't just like we have our opinions on our own players. But again, like, like I've done with the other players we've signed this season, because we're only a few games into the new season, I always go back to last season, mm -hmm. see how much they played. And yeah, I can see why he would probably want to move. At the very start of last season, the 23-24 uh, in the Celtic, uh, in the uh, Rangers team, he uh, he missed a lot of games. He wasn't in the squad, um, so he was only in the squad for five of the first seventeen games. Now that could have been because of injury, mm -hmm. or it could have been that he just wasn't picked. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe Rangers fans could uh, could <laughs> let us know that. Then after that as well, from game. Um, uh, 17 through to near enough to the end of the uh, game 30 he was in the squad and actually started and played minutes but there was like 22 minutes 15 minutes so I think he was coming on as a mm -hmm. sub um, in these games so I can't see any any game last season in the Scottish Premier League where we played more than 70 minutes so I think he was obviously used as a as a as a, an impact sub, or, and uh, so therefore I think you can see why he would want to potentially move. Maybe it's the right time for his career, and maybe Rangers seen that, but maybe feel that they've got better yeah. options in those positions. I mean, to you, Dad, does it feel similar to the Ben Davy situation in that, like, there's yeah. there's there's a quality player in there, but he's just fell out of favour at Rangers, and he's possibly not quite. Yeah. You know, being the first pick anymore, and he's obviously looking for a change to get some first team football, or at least get on the pitch <laughs> a little bit more. But there, there is a player in there; they've just kind of have a little bit of a, a slump in yeah, their career. I, maybe. I think uh, managers as well will make their choices on on which players they feel are the, are, the, are going to be their first mm -hmm. choice. Clearly, uh, Ben Davies wasn't, and neither um, you know was this chap. You know, ne neither of them were were clearly first choices because they didn't play enough minutes. I mean, Scott yeah. Wright, to me, he's clearly got loads and loads of potential and maybe he sees the move as an opportunity for him now to uh, really... At 27 as well, he, he probably feels this is the time now. I've really got it. I, I can't... If I stay at Rangers, I, I'll end up still being a bit part player. That's not going to do my career any good. So it's probably the right move for yeah. him as well. But I agree with you. He, he, he To me, he seems to be a player. Uh, I do like the way you've described it, you know, the fact that he's got that change and burst of pace. Yes. That's something we could really, really utilise yeah. as well. He also, he probably was keeping an eye on the Blues game, Blues Rangers game, thinking, blow me neck, this is incredible football. Mm. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know, when he played us well, that, that, that could have helped convincing him to call. Yeah. Yeah, because, and and uh, I think a lot of players now are looking what's That's about 15 grand a week in wages. <laughs> but <laughs> I think a lot of players now are looking at Chris Davies, they're mm. looking at Birmingham, they're looking mm. at the style of football we're playing, and they want to be a part of it. Yeah. You know, the fact we're copying championship players, um, Scottish internationals, Rangers standards of players. You well, know, it's I, really I, heard, I heard that to Sheffield Wednesday were after Scott yeah. Wright. So, uh, you know, so I think but we've had that, you know, and this is where you've got to be very impressed with what Birmingham City have done this summer. Yeah. Virtually every player we've signed has been competition from teams in higher divisions. Yeah. And Absolutely. yet we're still, we're still getting them. So uh, I think, you know, fair play to the uh, to the recruitment team for what they've yeah. done. And uh, as you said, I just want to jump on that bandwagon, Dad. You mentioned, uh, who did you mention there, sorry, a team? Uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. Also, I mentioned it at the start, Norwich have historically been in from Blackburn as well. So again, yeah. um, championship uh, uh, level quality. Uh, so we'll see we'll see what he brings but again as always Dad in his videos I've done a few little key strengths and a few little mm -hmm. key weaknesses so a few good strengths of his first touch 
Control, versatility, through balls, and changing in pace, uh, ch- ch- changes of pace yeah. as he moves forward. Yeah. And weaknesses slash improvements, aerial duels, defensive work, finishing, and aggression. So and our last player dad was Lyndon Dykes, and we spoke in his video about aggression mm. uh, and about what he's going to give us in terms of that you know, physicality. Yeah. I don't think he's that kind of player. He's a different kind of player, and he's going to be pace, skill, get past your man, get the ball in the box. But for me, I love... The key takeaway from my research in this conversation is the direct play. That yeah. that's what gets me excited the most: the change of pace, the directness. If he can, as I say, get some service into our forwards, get to the byline, and I think we're missing that. Our wingers tend to cut in a lot. Are we and, missing that? Yeah, we and, are. And, and, yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it comes, it becomes a little bit predictable. I want to see a classic Stan Lazaridis kind of to the. Just, I was just thinking of him to the byline and get it bit, in. I think you know we love we love a um, uh, a winger, you know, a direct winger, Stan Lazaridis, you know, or the, uh, Jose Dominguez, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, someone who's got a bit of flair and pace that yeah. can actually bypass, but also can actually deliver and supply exactly. as well. So, uh, you know, over the years, we've had some really, really uh, good... I remember you know, a player called Louis Donora as well. Oh, okay. I'm sure many Blues fans will remember. I used to love him as well. Yeah. Uh, again, a good a good pacey uh, winger as well. And if this guy can have those type of attributes, that's going to give a good supply to the percent Lyndon Dykes and to Alfie May and our forward line. That's really going to help. Yeah. I can't finish without my heat map. <laughs> 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 because um, this is quite an impressive one as well. You know, uh, he's uh, this is based upon. It's a bit of a. I couldn't go back too many seasons, so I went back to. I only went back to last season where we sort of had that on and off type of. Uh, but it still shows me enough to to show that he's um, literally uh, predominantly right to middle. But he does drift sometimes onto the left. So I'm guessing he might have been played on the left a few times as well because he's a little bit versatile. But mainly on the right and in the middle. Um, but it shows to me, the heat match shows me a good ethic and a good work rate as good. well, which is exactly the thing that Chris Davis is going to want from mm-hmm. his players. You know, above everything, you've got to put the shift in. Definitely. Uh, in fact, it, in fact, you won't work in Chris Davis' style of football if you don't put the shift in. It all breaks down. Yeah. You have to put the shift in. That's the yeah. only way this system works. Yeah. The only thing I would say as well, there's, there's very little um, uh, evidence that he goes very near the, the right back position. So if he's got Ethan Laird behind him, the, you know, in terms of cover, because obviously we're quite a forward-thinking team now. Um, I, I, I think there need to be a strategy in there to make sure we're not caught out at that position. If you yeah. know what I mean. But 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 everything else yeah. suggests he's, he's a hard worker. Because this season, when we're on the attack, we can sometimes blend into a four-three-three, and and in that formation, Laird is very attacking, isn't he? Yeah. He's almost. I feel like Chris Davis has given Laird a bit of creative freedom and to get up the the pitch as much as he can. So it'll be interesting to see how that relationship works uh, with Wright and Laird, if that's the choosing that Chris Davis wants to go with. And you're right, Dad, I think we are crying out for just a bit of a better quality product from that right hand side. If we could get our cl- a bit more clinicalness coming in from that right hand side, we'll score loads of goals. We'll score loads of goals. But we'll we'll score loads. Like, oh, yeah, something because yeah, very interesting uh, that uh, we're only three games played in League One. I think we're the third highest scorers in the league. Okay, that's... we've we've got six goals. I think um, probably Stockport. I can't, I can't remember who it was. Probably but, would be. But we, you know, basically, we're not lacking goals. It's just that we're not scoring, not you know. Mm-hmm. And obviously, we're, we're we're leaking goals through little bits of mistakes Slotiness, and transition yeah. and stuff like that, which which will which will come. But, uh, yeah. but and just the, like, and just like I mentioned, Dad, with the final delivery and the right hand side and the left hand side byline cutting in, whatever it might be, when the team gels a bit more, I think our final product will be a lot better. I mean, this team yeah. is still gelling. So, but but this player though, Matt Scott uh, Scott Wright, you know, do you know when 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 teams come and like put the barricades up, you know, playing two banks of four, parking the bus, parking the bus. A player like Scott Wright, you mentioned with his burst of pace, he's the type of player that could unlock that. Yes. Because, you know, uh, so rather than try and sort of pass around the bus, you've actually got a player now that can break Go the line. Go around it. Yeah, break the line. And and I think that's where we could really utilise a player like this. So, again, he's got a different attribute. I think Miyoshi's that style of player. But, um, again, I think the, we mentioned this before, sometimes he's just a little bit... Let's, dare I say lightweight in terms of yeah. getting pushed off the ball too easy um, will be interesting to see but Scott Rice got a lot of experience so we'll be very interested to see him in a blue shirt so uh, yeah. looking forward to seeing him but, um, yeah yeah and as I say I'm going to hold judgement until I see him in a blue shirt like I always do and I'm hoping he can uh, produce the goods under Chris Davis yep so uh, that's what May and Matt think uh, you know another another signing uh, through the door another um, piece of the jigsaw added to uh um, to the squad and uh, you know somebody we see as uh, having completely different attributes to be able to supplement what we've already got and make us even stronger but we'd love to know 
what your thoughts are. So what do you think about this signing, Blues fans? Uh, do you think Scott's going to be uh, a good signing for Blues? How do you see him fitting into the uh, to the Blues squad? Let us know your comments below. If you're Rangers supporters, then uh, let us know your thoughts as well about uh, about Scott. Um, just to remind you that you know we are a, a family friendly uh, podcast, so uh, uh, please uh, keep your uh, comments um, so that they're respectful uh, and we don't allow any uh, swear words or anything like that. But p- please, uh, be lovely to have um, your comments as well. Um, if you did like this podcast, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't checked us out on our social media channels already, pop along to our X page and our Instagram page, uh, and also you'll find the podcast now on Spotify. And you'll see the handles appearing on the screen right now. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content all about Birmingham City. And myself and Matt will see you on the next video.